Okay, so before we begin, I, I just have a few questions for you. First and foremost, how did you find out about us? Was it Facebook advertising? M possibly. Advertising or either Facebook or, or YouTube. Or either YouTube. One yeah, yes. YouTube is the more likely one. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, gotcha. So you came across us on YouTube, then you went through all of the channels, and then you went ahead and, and purchased just the course? I mean, just the signals, or was it the course and the signals? Uh, I think the course. Course and the signals. Very Three, nice. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. And then how long yeah. ago did you start with us? I started like, uh, this is my will be my third week. Third week? Yeah. And how's your experience been so far? Awesome. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I the first <laughs> week I, I, I just I couldn't move, you know, because it's kind of new. So I kind of sure. froze. I you know Right. Yeah, there's a little bit of week. learning to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then a uh, little bit and I, I and it's so far so good. I mean I nice. Yeah. How much did you start with? I start with five grand. Okay. Yeah. Got you. And today you're at and then uh the first week I make around twenty almost twenty nine hundred. Wow, very nice. And and then I put in another twenty five grand. So I gotcha. I, I'm sorry, um, twenty one grand. So total is my twenty six. Gotcha, gotcha. And so then, total total that you put in is twenty six. That's correct. Yes. Understood. And today, what's your balance at? Around forty five um, two sixty four. Very yes. nice, very nice, Kevin. Congratulations, first and foremost. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Of course, of course. Obviously, you know it's normal for us to see gains from all of our clients, but Sometimes when I personally see gains that are extremely aggressive, I always like to take a deeper look, right? Because my goal and really monetary's goal as a whole is to make sure you're successful over the long term. So I'll give you a little bit of a story about me. Okay. When, when I first started trading, I've been trading for 12 years, but when I first started trading, I was trading futures, not options. Uh, when I was trading futures, I did very well for probably the first eight months. Okay, I, I think I turned maybe a uh, hundred k into somewhere close to like eight hundred. Yeah, within wow. probably the first twelve or fourteen months. Um, and and I was getting really good at anticipating the market, but what I wasn't getting good at was uh, my ego. <laughs> so part of trading is very emotional, right? You might not feel it at first, but over time it becomes very emotional. And with futures. It's different than options because with options, when you buy something, you can only lose what you put in, right? So if you have a yes. trade for $1,000 with options, you can only lose $1,000. With futures, you can lose a lot more than you put in. So to paint the picture total, uh, Kevin, I had a trade that I got into that was $10,000. I was trading oil and gas futures at this time. Um, this was in uh, 2017 uh, or 2016, I think. But during that time, I let that trade run because of my own ego. I let that trade run because I didn't learn all these emotional things at first. And I ended up losing 660000 on that trade. Ooh, Pretty much good. almost blew my account. So as you can imagine, <laughs> the last oh. thing I wanted to think about at that time was trading. <laughs> so I took six months off. By the way, it was on my birthday that I took this trade. Oh. Um, so I was just, I was feeling superhuman, right? But <laughs> I ended up losing all of that money. And that's when I realized that trading is, is much more than a game about analytics. You also have to be really, really good with emotions. And really, really good about uh, controlling your ego. So sometimes, like you get so good at reading the market, like me sometimes, that you stick so hard to your plan. And then the market shows you something different, right? But if you have an ego, you'll continue to stick to the plan, continue to stick to the plan, continue to stick to the plan until you lose everything. The best traders are the number one attribute they have is adaptability. They, they have a bias. They're able to come to a conclusion, but they will give it up very quickly if the market shows them something else. And that's always where we want to be. We always want to be fluid, adaptable. And the most important aspect of trading is risk management. Okay, so making sure that we're not risking anything beyond our means, that we're doing everything with considerable gain, that we understand what there is to win and to lose in any scenario, because anything can happen. We know that the market is extremely volatile. You've done very, very good to get yourself to this point. One of the hardest barriers of entry with trading is trading on a margin account with 25,000. So the reason that is, is because there's something called the pattern day trading rule, which you may have heard in some of our tutorials. Okay, That's where you're restricted to three day trades every five days on a margin account if you don't have 25,000. So you're already well beyond that point. You cross the line that a lot of traders can't get past to begin with. So right now you're in really, really, really good territory. You're able to make as many day trades as you want. And by day trade, it's a trade that you buy and sell in the same day, right? So yes. you're able to make as many as you want. You don't have restrictions. No one can tell you that hey, you can't take this trade or you can't exit this trade. You have full autonomy because of your balance. Now, what we need to get into here is 
how much we're putting into each trade. So for example, um, I noticed that in that screenshot that you just sent me, right? Um, it was about uh, three contracts that you were taking. Okay. Yes. Probably because this is your uh, first spread position. That's correct. Yes. Okay, cool. So one of the things that I noticed that you were doing is you're trading on the TD Ameritrade platform, meaning you're trading on the website. Yes. Okay. There's an app that TD Ameritrade has. It's called Think or Swim. It is an app. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll share my screen and kind of shows you. Um, but it is a better trading platform for your computer as a whole, for you. So okay. for example, you know, I'll kind of paint the picture for you real quick and share my screen so I can show you. It's, uh, it's very, very important that we use this platform because when you're on the internet, Kevin, uh, you rely on the connectivity to the website. You rely on servers and proxies where if you're actually trading from the Thinkorswim app, then you're trading fully on a totally, like totally separate from Google Chrome, totally separate from um, any of those servers. Okay, you're trading direct. So I'll share my oh, screen wow. with you right now. This is essentially what TOS or Thinkorswim looks like. So we like TD Ameritrade. Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger for you actually uh, with the font. Um, so we'll go here, we'll go to uh, look and feel and we'll do kind of large font. Here, that'll make it a little bit bigger. So the big benefit here of um, using this specific setup is that you know we can type in a stock, say like Apple, and then we can go find the date that we want, right? Which is September 15th. And then we can find the strike that we're looking to play. So from here, what we can do is we can just click right here on this specific stock. And then on the bottom, we have the ability to either sell it or we can click here to buy it and then confirm and send. So it's a lot simpler to get into the trades, more so to get into the spreads, right? This morning we played a spread, buy the 170, sell the 172.5, correct? Yes. So to do that on, on TOS, we would just right click where it says 170 and we would go to buy vertical. And from here, we can go ahead and just put in our price and enter into our spread and change the amount of contracts that we would want to buy. Okay. So this makes it significantly easier because there's no other screens to go to. There's no like hoops and stuff to jump through. You can trade mm -hmm. all through TOS. So one of the things I'm going to do really quick is actually send you the download link for TOS. It's the same way that you sign into the website is, is really the same way that you'll be signing into TOS, but you will see it as an icon on your computer. It'll be a separate application. I see. Okay. Yes. Okay. This also makes trading a whole lot easier. Say for example, you know, let's say you were in still in your oxy trade. So we go here. Okay. We look at the 66. We can actually add a bunch of contracts to our watch list here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we have a watch list up here, actually, let me change this really quick. Personal, let's go to C1. So if we add this contract to uh, our watch list, we can add say a bunch of them. Okay. To our watch list that we have here. All right. And then we can yes. go over to charts and this is where we can really trade with efficiency. Okay. Mm. When we use this thing called the active trader ladder, because we can click on a contract. Okay. Like oxy and we can decide exactly what point we want to get in mm. 87, 88, 90, 91. Right. We can control mm. the amount of contracts we have and we can tell the system, okay, I want to try to get in for 80. Obviously the lowest bid right now is 87. The highest sell is 91, so you're not going to get in for 80, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of canceling and replacing the order, you can just drag the order to the right place. Okay, So we can always drag it. And really the same thing with the sell. You can always drag it and change it to a new spot. So it, uh, makes, it makes trading a lot more physical and easier for you to latch on to. Mm. Does that make sense? I see, yes. By the way, all of this stuff is in the course and, and our tutorials, but... That's just one thing that I saw on your end. You were trading from the website, making it a little bit difficult for yourself, right? When it could be a lot easier if, if you were on Thinkorswim. Not necessarily easier to trade, but easier to get in and out, which I is the most important yes. part, right? So yes. uh, that was one of the things I wanted to cover. Let me actually go ahead and share that link with you in Discord. Give me one Thank second you. for sure. Right now, uh, is does the, I'm, I'm happy on my on the laptop right now. Okay. I think it's, the power is not that strong. Is that okay? I mean, should I download it to just 32 or 64 or something like that? Is that how uh how many gigs of RAM is your laptop? I think only uh 1.8 something like that. 
No, your uh, your RAM would be like either it's eight gigabytes or sixteen gigabytes or thirty-two. Oh, uh, yeah, probably eight, eight, eight. Okay, so eight will be okay to run Thinkorswim. It's not a particularly huge platform. The better your laptop is, the better your overall trading will be. So, do you normally trade on your laptop or do you normally trade on like a desktop? Normally, I um, I use that one. Normally, I trade on my phone. Okay. And and and, and I don't have a desktop. I only have gotcha. a laptop. Oh, Same. Yes. Same. I, I only have a laptop, but my laptop is a, is a pretty powerful laptop. So I went out and I got a, an Alienware. So it has 32 gigs of RAM and I can run a lot on it and, and not really worry too much about, um, you know, if something is going to crash or, you know, you know, yeah, issues I was thinking computers. about upgrade too. <laughs> I would upgrade. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would definitely upgrade Kevin. Um, yeah. I would use, put some of your profits towards an upgrade. I can give you suggestions of course, uh, but my laptop, I think it cost me somewhere around 1300 or 1400 I don't think you need to spend that much. I think uh, any laptop really with 16 or 32 gigs of RAM would be pretty good. Um, 16 but, or 32. Yeah, 16 or 32 would be pretty decent. Um, and then if anything, I would just set up a couple of monitors uh, in addition so that you can see a lot of things at the same time. For example- yeah, I got a big monitor. Like, oh, uh, okay. Okay, 28 good. 28 in the back. <laughs> I didn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would use it. <laughs> Yeah. I think I found its purpose, but yeah, the monitor is always good because then you can start running trading view, right? Which is the application that we use to chart. So uh, tra trading view. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Which, which is a huge application for me personally, but nonetheless, I think everyone can benefit from having trading view because once you learn how to do technical analysis, then you start getting really, really good at being able to predict certain moves. Uh, for example, you know, we have SPY here. The The moment we see it break beyond this resistance line to the downside, we can assume, you know, it's going to fall down, you know, towards the bottom. Uh, or yes. same thing that we have here. We can look at it in different time frames and we can see the same sort of move come down. And you have an idea of where the next line is so that yeah. you know where to catch it if you want to go on the way up, et cetera. Yeah, double et cetera. bottom there, huh? Go, come back up. <laughs> yes, slight double mm -hmm. bottom indeed. Um, so we see it here with the five minute candles, when you drop down into the one minute candles, you know, you really start picking up a lot. You can see how well we hold on mm. to the support. We almost let it go, uh, mm. but we continue to hold up above and then we do a full V, right? So here at this point, um, you know, we'd be extremely, extremely cautious because we're around the same point at where we fell from last time. So right now we'd yeah. be watching the same, making sure that we don't really give up this support that we have here. But again, TradingView is uh, an excellent tool, even if you're taking trades on your own. The goal, the goal of our course is really to help you become an isolated trader where you wouldn't necessarily need to rely on me or anybody uh, to be able to take a trade. So there's a bunch of strategies that I go over in that specific course where you'd be able to see kind of how to learn to take certain trades. For example, one of the best trades you could possibly take is called an RSI switch. And that is when we see this RSI indicator down here, and we have hmm. a purple line go up and across the gold line. And whenever you see that, that means that the current price strength is really good. So it indicates a good call opportunity for us. If you, if you go back in history, you'll be able to see times where this happens occasionally, uh, where we do get that switch and we can push up and play calls directly to the upside. Nice. But is that a reverse? Is that a reverse place? Here? Is, yeah, is that the reverse place? So this is this is called the uh, relative strength index. Relative strength index. Okay. Yeah, RSI. relative strength index. RSI. RSI. This is one of the yes. most important and potent indicators that you can get for sure. Hmm. Always nice to to try to make sure it's a bigger time frame. But if you're trading very uh, quick, like a scalp trader or a pure mm -hmm. day trader, then you might want to rely on the one minute. But sometimes, if you're looking at a stock from you know the fifteen minute perspective, it is also very very good to look for RSI switches as they can possibly indicate further upside or downsides, right? When you get RSI switches to the bottom side, right? They could potentially indicate. You know, Did you further. use a two minute, the two minute? I don't use the two minute too often. The main ones oh. that I use are, are one minute, five minute, 15 minute, one hour, four hour, one day. Those would be the main ones. And when we're trading spreads, and I'll talk to you about this, but the main reason why I like spreads so much is because now we play on the side of probability with every trade. Mm -hmm. 
instead of having to guess, you know, when you play a call or put, I have to look at SPY right now and say, okay, I think it's going to go up. So I'll play a call or I think it's going to go down. So I'll play put. Those are my only two options with a single leg, right? Yes. I have to be right about one of them. But yes. with a spread, we can choose a position that has nothing to do with what's going on right now. For example, if I say, I think SPY will finish above 445 this week. Okay. Well, 445 okay. is so far. Mm -hmm. So the probability is on our side. So to do that, I can go directly to TOS and I can say, let me look up SPY. I think it's going to stay above 445. So I will right click the 444 by the vertical. Okay. And in this position, it will cost me 80 cents or 79 cents. And my max profit is the difference between these two strikes. So the <laughs> furthest this position can go is $1. But still, you turn 79 cents into $1 per contract. It's still mm -hmm. not bad for being able to guess that you're not going to go down. In a regular position, call or put, if the stock trades flat, let's say we trade here all day, okay? And we finish the day over here at the same price, 447. Well, mm -hmm. if you have a call or a put, both of them will suck, Yeah. right? Because for a call, you need it to go up. For a put, you need it to go down. And when it trades flat, they both lose money. But for yes. us, with a spread, if our goal is to just stay above 445, when the stock trades flat, this is good for us. I see. Right? Because we're playing with probability. We are playing with time. So every hour that passes, that SPY does not go to 445, we continue to push in profit. I see. So you could play like... Uh... Uh, is that you, you write your own contract or something? Is that something like that? It's kind of like making mm. your own uh, contract in a way, mm. right? Whereas for this particular spread, right? This one expires on the 15th. So we're saying, hey, I want to put money on the fact that SPY will finish above 445 by Friday. If I want to, I can do this for September 13th, right? Which is mm -hmm. today. Yeah. And I can say, I think SPY is going to finish above 445. And I go here, go vertical, but you see how expensive this one is. Why? Because mm -hmm. today is the last day. We only have five hours left in the market and SPY is unlikely to drop to 445. So this one is 95% probability. Wow. That's pretty high. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very high. So you can only make seven or $8 per contract on this one because why everyone already believes this, mm -hmm. right? It's very hard for SPY to drop $2 in just five hours. Okay. So it's an easy bet to take. Of course, you can go further up and say, Hey, I think spy is going to finish above 442. Mm. Okay. Which is very likely spy is very unlikely to fall $5, but this position is already very close to max profit or is mm. at max profit because mm. everyone already understands hey, spy is probably going to finish above 442. So in our Apple trade, right? We take the position that we think Apple is going to finish above 172.5. Now, it's very important to note, we're not far from 172.5, but Apple is a huge company. And as a result, it does not move that much. It, it is very hard for Apple to move $1 because in order for Apple to move $1, you need $80 billion of inflow or outflow. Wow. Mm. Okay. $80 billion. This is the size of some companies, of big companies, but this is $1 for Apple. So it is a large stock. If we look at Apple as a stock, we will see the last time Apple even went to 172.5, which is all the way down here, okay, far away, was August 18. Hmm. So the probability that we will stay above 172.5 is very, very high. Also, we have nice. multiple support points here that lead hmm. me to believe that Apple will probably not see this drop. Apart from that, Apple just released its new iPhone yesterday historically, from the time that Apple releases uh, or announces their iPhone to the pre-order date, which is this Friday, Apple has gone up 1%, historically. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there, there is a fundamental, right? Mm -hmm. Anything fundamental is always going to be news, financials, earnings. Every quarter, each stock reports their earnings, their public company, so we have to see, right? Any kind of news at all, that's all fundamental stuff. Mm -hmm. Technical stuff is all stuff with the chart. So we have a fundamental reason to think Apple is going to go up and we have a technical reason to think Apple is going to stay above 172.5. So that makes that a good trade. For Tesla, okay, we have both as well. We have a fundamental reason why we think Tesla is going to stay up and that is because Tesla has a lot of news. 
there's been a lot of price target raises for Tesla. If we scroll down here in the news index, we will see a bunch of price target raises for Tesla. And also a lot of analysts are coming out to say a lot of good things about Tesla regarding Dojo and building its supercomputer. Okay. Over time, you're going to start like, this is the good thing about being a trader. You will know news before anybody else mm -hmm. because everybody else watches the news for pleasure. You watch the news to make money. So it's very yes. different, right? Yeah. So yeah. you will know the news ahead of time. People will tell you, oh, did you see Tesla drop the new price of, of uh, the month? Yeah, I know. That was a week ago, <laughs> right? <laughs> because you see the impact right away it had on the stock. By the way, this is exactly when Tesla dropped the price of their cars. You know, the stock went down 5%. So yes, trust me, we know that day, okay? But the next day, right away, we played a call on Tesla. We watched the RSI bounce, okay? You see this large jump up. And Tesla bounced up 5% the next day. Mm -hmm. And then down and then up. So Tesla's always going to have its movements. Right now, we just want the stock by our alert. So when we send out our alert here, by our alert, we want Tesla to stay above 265. Okay, And that is very, very likely. So tomorrow, we will likely close out this trade significantly higher than we purchased it today. But if we want mm. the full profit, okay? If we go to Tesla and we want the full 250, right? 265. Okay. So on Tesla, this is this is interesting. You would buy the vertical on the 262.5, go to the 265 right away. Okay. And here <laughs> we purchased it, I think, at 195. So it's still very close. The max this position can go to is 250. And that happens as long as Tesla stays above 265. We're $7 away right now. We should still be good but we don't have to be right about it going up or down. Okay? Mm -hmm. We just have to be right about where it's not going. I see. Okay, so if I tell you, Kevin, Tesla's not going to go down and it trades flat for the next month, well, I can still come to you and be like, Kevin, I was right. I told you it's not mm -hmm. going down, right? But if I tell you Tesla's going up or Tesla's going down and it stays flat, I'm wrong, mm -hmm. right? So we In always- In that case, want... what, then what happened? We, we're going to, uh, if, if, if your prediction is wrong, would that be like, you still minimize your loss, is that correct? Like yes. So the loss is minimized because the reason why, think about this, right? We're buying the 262.5 and we're selling the 265. Okay. If Tesla stock price goes down, mm -hmm. okay, both of these go down because yes. they're both calls, right? Yes. That's correct. One of them we bought and the other one we sold, which means mm -hmm. this one is hurting us and this one is helping us. Okay. So we're kind of protected from heavy, heavy moves. That's and that's why we like to play the spread because first of all, it's only $2. You right? mean heavy move uh, on the wrong side? What about heavy move upside? Is that we, we good? Heavy move upside is good for us, but okay. it's not really the best. See right. what happens if, let's say Tesla tomorrow opens at 300, okay? Well, what will happen? Our 262.5 call, this gives us the right to purchase Tesla at 262.5 meaning okay. it will be worth at least 37.50. Yes. Right? Our 265 will be worth at least 35. But we bought this one and we sold this one. Meaning okay. 37.50 minus 35, the most we can make is that 250. I but see. it's still good for us because we're still at 250. That's correct. That's Part of me will be a little upset though because <laughs> we could have had a much bigger move. Okay? Yeah. But mm -hmm. when we ride with probability, it is much safer. And I would rather us rely on safe money than mm -hmm. try to just shoot for the moon every week. Nice. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Always stick to the probable. This is it's just like the, the opposite. Let's say if you want to open a casino, this is a great idea. If you want to play at the casino, this is a bad idea. But if you want to open the casino, this is a good idea. Why? Because as the casino, all I have to do is not lose. Yeah, you, yes. Mm -hmm. As the player, I have to win. Yes. Okay. I can't be That's flat. Mm -hmm. So if I go to the, say I go to the roulette table, you know, the table where they spin the ball and it has to fall in a number and I pick either red or black, I have to be right about red or black, but the casino, they just have to not lose. It can be green. It can be black. As long as the person in front of you loses, the casino wins. So the casino is always going to be profitable. Why? Because they're on the side of probability every time. The probability is in their favor. Even if it's 52-48, the probability is still in their favor.
right? Yep. <laughs> and those are the best games yep. at the casino where the probability is 52, 48. But over the long run, over many years, that 52 is going to beat that 48. So yep. with, with spreads, we want to be on the same side where we're on the 52 or 54 or 60 or 70, and we leave the other 20 or 30% chance on the other side. Yep. That, mm -hmm. I see. that mm -hmm. makes sense? Definitely, yes. Beautiful. Because and, I haven't, uh, you know, uh, deal with this before. I always do like basic put a car, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but never, you know, have never this kind of uh, knowledge to do this. Yes. <laughs> no. Well, uh, also other groups are not really going to be too interested in spreads because another group would just want to go in and say, hey, we made a thousand percent on this. And then they will use that as an advertisement forever. Yeah. A thousand, thousand percent and make everyone think that they can get a thousand percent. This is not true. Okay. You can get lucky for sure, but yes. the, the stable money, the real way to trade and to trade forever. I'm not talking about, you know, your friend, he trade maybe six months and then he lose all his money. He's quit. He's done with trading forever, right? To trade the right way to make considerable money year over year over year. And the way a hedge fund does it is to always take the trades with high probability. Consistently. Yes. Consistently. With right. Oops. Now this, this does not mean we should not play calls and puts from time to time. It does make sense to play calls and puts. Mm -hmm. Why? If something is very obvious, yeah. very, very obvious, then of course, for us, it makes a lot of sense to try to take those trades. For example, you know, um, just like I was talking about with, with Tesla, when we had here the news of them dropping the price of the cars. If you know they're dropping the price of the cars, now I'm going to get a little bit fundamental on you. But one of the biggest problems with Tesla is always going to be their gross margin. The company mm. does good in sales, but their margin is very low. You can see here in 2021, the margin was 27%, then 29%. Now it's 19 and 18%. Mm. So the margin is getting lower. Investors are worried. So when you cut mm. the price, all investors start worrying about, oh no, the margin is going to go down. The margin is going to go down, right? Yeah. And that mm -hmm. leads to a big drop. So if you know something like this, it's okay. Play Tesla put, right? Play the Tesla yeah. put. But- we're not going to leave it for two weeks, right? We're going to play Tesla put maybe 930 and then maybe sell it 945, 935 even, okay? Because you can make a lot of money with just a small move here, small move here. Even if you it's look It's a volatile at, stock, right? It's, 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 it's an it's extremely volatile, volatile stock, volatile. extremely volatile. When you look at options, you will always have the, the option to see what's called the implied volatility. Yeah. This will tell what you- What percentage would be, uh, you can see the- Medium, uh, low, so this, or high? This would be relatively high. 52% is kind of high. 50, yes, but this can change, okay? Mm. Every stock has its own low, medium, and high. For yeah. Tesla, this is medium. Tesla is very normal for it to be between 50 and 70%. Even if you see 90% is not weird for Tesla. Wow. Well, mm. Okay, but if you see like 50% for Apple, definitely very weird. Mm -hmm. Apple should be somewhere between like 18 and 30% and not really changing much between them. If we go to Apple now, you know, we'll see it's 26. Significantly lower than Tesla. Why? Because Apple does not move that much. Yes. Right? If we go to bigger stocks like Netflix and NVIDIA, they will have relatively high volatility. But then you will see stocks like SPY and QQQ. SPY's uh, IV should probably be anywhere from maybe 8 to 22%, if that. Even lower than, than, than Apple? <laughs> Even lower than Apple, yes, of course. SPY is very low. And these are the contracts that expired today. These are the most volatile. Mm -hmm. And they're still 16%. So we also have some days where we're going to trade same-day contracts, meaning they expire six hours after we play them. Oh, wow. <laughs> very, volatile. Very, yeah. very volatile. Very, very volatile. Yeah. For SPY, there is an expiration date every single day. You'll see September 13, 14, 15. Every day, there is an expiration date. Normally, is every Friday. Like if we look at Apple or any other stock, is going to be every Friday. So we have 15, 22, 29, October 6. But sometimes on Friday, they get a lot of volume because people know this contract is going to expire in six hours. So they start trading it. It's super cheap. And they can start trading it the way they want to. I see mostly, but the pro gonna try it, not the regular people, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, some some people they 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 get into the market and they start looking at it very close, like a casino, and that's mm -hmm. where they start making really risky bets. And they start saying, "Well, if this happens, then 
I will make a thousand or I'll make 10,000 or I'll make a million. Oh, that's definitely always the wrong way to think, <laughs> right? You always want to have probability on your side. One of yeah. the other things I noticed from your, from your oxy trade, by the way, this is a great trade. Okay. The execution that you did was slightly off, but it worked out heavily in your favor. So the market gods, they love you. But with Oxy, one of the things is we entered yesterday around this time in the morning, okay, when the stock was still falling. Or not yesterday, I'm sorry. Uh, I think it, yeah, no, it was yesterday. Yeah, the day before, I think it's what, on Monday. Monday. Yes. Okay, right, right, right. You're 100% right. We entered right here around this time. Around 60. I, I, I remember when uh, the Senna was like 60. Right. Yeah. And then what happened? The stock fell incredibly. Yeah. So the call I, got I get very it like cheap. Around 20 and, and 24. And so then, we yeah. call these rebuys, okay? Yeah. Or DCA, dollar cost averaging. You buy more yes. contracts cheaper so that you can have an overall cheaper purchase. Yes. Right? And then what happens? The next day, the stock shoots up. Yes. <laughs> oh my. Okay. And then this is where you're selling, right? Tuesday? Where yes, did you, that's fair. Right? I yeah, sell, that was yesterday. I sell around in the morning, around 50 cents. Yes. Okay. So that would have been somewhere over here. Yes, that's correct. And then you probably sold a few more throughout the course of the day. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Okay. So what what you did here was slightly dangerous. The yes. reason why is if we stayed flat here at this point around 63, you would have lost a lot of money. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> right? So yeah. you're betting on this. By the way, Mamba is a great trader. Okay. Phenomenal. I've known him for many years. He's an excellent trader. But he trades with a really big account, yeah. huge. For example, yeah. I trade, my account is probably anywhere between 100 to 150K. Every time I go over 150K, I withdraw and I put it into shares. I see. Okay, yeah. I go buy Tesla or Apple or any other stock that I like. But for Mamba, he trades with an account that's 500K, sometimes even up to 700K. So for him, he can put 5,000 on a play and he doesn't have to think twice about it. Yes, right. If it goes down to zero, it went down to zero. If it goes up a lot, it goes up a lot. Right. But the important thing that we have to do when you're following me or Mamba is not chase. Mm -hmm. So let's say you start this position with 10 contracts at 60 and you see it cheaper later on, leave it alone. Okay. The next mm -hmm. day you'll get the opportunity to maybe sell higher, maybe, but mm -hmm. you don't want to be on the other side of probability. Yeah. Right. You want to maintain the idea, just in case this continues to trade flat. That's correct. Yeah. Now, like I said, Mamba's very smart and he can predict the market very well, right? But all of his trades don't work out. He knows that. Yes. The thing with him is he doesn't need every trade to work out, right? Mm -hmm. His win percentage is lower than mine, but his average profit is higher because when he wins, he wins big. Yeah. Right? For me, I'm a little bit different. My win rate is higher, but my average profit is lower because I focus more on probability. Yes. Okay? So when you get to 500K, by all means, Kevin, send as many contracts as you want into a play, right? <laughs> no. In the beginning, we want to be very meticulous about what we're going into. We never yeah. want to put, say, maybe more than 5% of our entire portfolio into a play. Yes, definitely. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're at 45 right now, 5% would be around 2,200-ish, right? That's yes. what you would want to commit to a play at max. You could go lighter, That's of right. course, right? Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. if it's a stock you haven't traded uh, or something that you disagree with or mm -hmm. something that you've just never seen before, maybe a new strategy. Yeah. Okay. So like the call debit spreads that we're doing now, you're right to buy maybe between three and five contracts, right? And then from there, you can experiment, see how yeah. they work, see how they mm -hmm. move, learn them, gain that experience, and then move on from there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that is one, definitely one of the most important things. The reason why I wanted to reach out to you in the first place is because we care a lot. And I always want to make sure, sometimes in the past, this has happened. I see people, they come in, they turn 20,000 to 100,000. And yeah. now all of a sudden, they think they're like God, right? Yeah. They think, oh, the market is going to move my way every time. But the problem is, if you use the same mentality that you made 20,000 to 100,000, and the market goes against you, you're going to yeah. end up losing it all. Yeah. And yep. then it you're won't right. be too good, yes. mm -hmm. right? So you don't so want to be as aggressive, right? Yeah. So. 100% we have to say that you are extremely successful in the very beginning and congratulations. We cannot take that away from you. I'm sure Mamba is sitting very happy with his Oxy contracts as well. But <laughs> yeah. we have to make sure that yeah. going forward, 
you're able to keep this money. And then over the long run, you're able to consistently maintain profit. Definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So not, I'll be, not to give back to the market. <laughs> don't give it back to the market. Yes. <laughs> Definitely <Yeah>. not. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what I will also say is now you're at the balance where you can put some of your money in shares if there are certain stocks that you like, right? Because it's going to be very rare that all of your money is tied up in place. Okay. Yeah, that's why normally I go, I only use like a, like ten percent maximum like the right. other day. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So in a mm -hmm. case like that, you know, if there is a stock that you like, you might be able to put say five thousand or six thousand or seven thousand dollars into that stock, because mm -hmm. over the long run, this is how you're really really going to make a lot of money. Okay. Tremendous yes. amounts of money. Okay. Like I've I've been invested in. Netflix and Tesla for many years, many years. Netflix remains to be my biggest position. And I purchased $40,000 worth of shares in Netflix in 2014. Um, and since then, it, this, the stock has been phenomenal. If you look back to 2014, oh, yeah, yep. you know, we're, we're talking about way it's over split here. And everything, right? It's split up everything and it's give split. you more share and go. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Split considerably. Considerably. I think I even made some purchases in 2012 for Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yes, same, same with Tesla. You know, when we see those kinds of splits, those are the good things that help us out in the long run. You can never make more money than a stock is going to give you in five years or 10 years. Nice. Yeah. Right. So we want to drill down on all of these things. I did send you the download link for Thinkorswim. I believe that the rest of the course should be available to you in the monetary trading website, right? When, once you sign in, you should be able to see yeah, all, of, yes. all of those yes. videos. Very good. I need to review those. I went over one time, but I need to review those. You know, good, too. good. And then I will say once you, either you can do it from, from the website or from TOS, but take a chance with those spreads, see how they work out, gain some experience playing the call debit spreads. Okay. And then, uh, then we move on to, you know, tomorrow where I honestly, it's weird because this CPI report, we should have went down. Right. But, uh, so I don't know, up. <laughs> but I mean, right now we're, we're still up $1. It's, it's a little bit of a weird scenario, but you can see, you know, we're finding some, some struggles to pass certain lines. We'll see exactly what ends up happening throughout the course of the day. But tomorrow's another day we can we can bring in some new ideas and maybe we can probably sell the spreads that we have. So we'll see. But anyway, I, I definitely wanted to take some time to make sure, you know, I, I point you in the right direction. Make sure Kevin keeps his money and does never give it back to the market. And then that we're always rolling on the side of probability. And most importantly, not to ever chase a play, even if it has continued to the downside. I see. Yes. Okay. The, are there any questions that you have for me? Okay. The one earlier, I you said I, I played it wrong. I mean, uh, yes. it should be an invert, right? Should be reverse. Reverse. Um, in that case, how do I reverse on my um on my order? So, uh, let me see. I'm I'm gonna stop the share. I'm gonna actually give you access to share your screen. Oh, actually, no, because you're on your phone, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But actually, I can uh, I can go to my uh Computer? laptop. Okay. Cool. You can go ahead and join our call from from your laptop. You have Discord on your laptop too, right? Let's see. I have this quote, but somehow I uh, I signed a different. Uh, oh, you have a different uh, account. account. <laughs> account different account. <laughs> Let's see right here. You think I can? Uh, let me see. I can uh, work, turn my camera. Yeah, you can turn your camera. Yeah, cam camera and see. Is it too blur? Yeah, it's somehow. a little blurry because I think in Zoom you have the um you have the uh, blur background. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, um, can you show on your side? On your side, let's say I'm gonna. Sure. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Somehow I couldn't get in. So my... on on my side, I have um because I trade through TOS, but I will uh attempt to trade. I will try to go to the TD Ameritrade website. Because I used to trade like that before. <laughs> like I'm gonna use it. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Once you download the app, it will become a lot easier. It's weird, and when I do that, it doesn't have for me an option uh, to go debit. You only have credit on market. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if I can bring it on my side. Net credit or market vertical car spread. Mm, okay, I kind of see what you're talking about, but I think I know why. Okay, let me see. Okay, so for example, you're on basically this screen, 
vertical yes, call spread. Yes, that's correct. Right? Yes. Okay, what we want to do yes. is we want to come here, type in Apple, option chain, and then we want to pick 170, 172.5, and we want to click correct. on this one. Okay. Yes. I and click on the price. Yes, yes. Yes. And once you click on the ask side, because if you pick on this side, it thinks you want to sell it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I, I, I click on, on that one. Oh, no, yeah, I, I, I click on the bid side. Okay. Yes. So if you click on the ask side, then it'll give you buy 170, sell 172.5. And then you type in your premium, right? Which I think we bought in for 220. Yeah. Okay? And then you leave that the same and then hit review order. So should I okay. click on the bid side, right? It's not the ask side, right? No, click on the ask side. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Let me see. Okay. Sure. Try it on your uh, side. Let's try. Let me try on the ask side. Sure. Right yeah. Oh, you're right. And then when I click on the ask side, it go out debit. Yep. Net debit. Then Net you just debit. type type in the amount of contracts and then the premium. Yeah. Uh, the premium, uh, let's say it's uh, 225 right now. Let's say I want to buy uh, lower. I can, I can, you know. You can two, try to put two, 220. 220, something like that. I see. I just click review. Uh-huh. And it said like six, six, three, something like that. Yeah, that for three contracts. But just for two contracts. Correct. Let's say I try it now. I can, I can do that. Click place like that. Yep. All right. <laughs> uh, your spread order by two contract uh, number is not, uh, you know, still open. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's still working on getting filled? Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. It might take some time to get into a spread to get filled. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing you can do is if you wait a little bit and it still doesn't fill, then you can change the price instead of 220. Maybe you have to try 225. But I think 220 should go through at some I point. See. We'll see. see. We'll see. Yeah. If it doesn't it's change like that. Yeah. Yeah. If it doesn't change like that, you can always go back and, and replace the order at, at a different premium. I see. Yeah, I can I can edit the uh, click yep. on the box buy one and then edit the price. Yes. And then edit the price exactly. I would give yeah. it a bit. Should go through at at two twenty, but if not, you can always try two twenty five. That should work too. I see. And then what what is the goal here? I mean, until uh, you're gonna I'm gonna wait for your when yes to sell so, right right. You're gonna wait for me to update tomorrow, right? Our goal really is to be able to sell this probably at two forty five or two fifty. Okay. okay. We might Ooh. have to wait until Friday. We might have to wait until tomorrow afternoon, but eventually it will come. Okay. That's good. <laughs> okay. And then uh, um, when I click sale, it's like regular, right? Just like sale, right? Just yeah. Just regular click. sell on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just it will, click it will on automatically do the inverse. I'm sorry. What did you say? I said it, it's going to automatically do the inverse when you want to oh, close yeah, so that we, position. Uh, yeah. 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 It's I gonna see. sell the one you bought and bought the one you and buy the one you sold. I see. I just click on my position and and, and sell it. Correct. And, yep. But you just have to uh, enter the correct premium. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, all. The correct uh, amount. Yes. I mean the price I wanted to get out. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your time, um, 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 uh, You're Go. welcome. You're very. <laughs> yeah. You're very welcome, Kevin. You're very welcome. I'm glad you we have. Your, your real name, Go. Sure. My my real name is Abdel. Abdel. Yes, A B D E L. Um, but everybody calls me Ab. Like all my friends call me Ab. Like okay, A B E L. Right. Cool. Sure thing. Thank you. You're Thank very you so welcome, much, Kevin. Ab. Yeah. I, I I appreciate your time. I'm I'm very happy that we got on and and spoke to each other. Always want to make sure that you know all of the members are are taking the right steps accordingly. But if you need anything at all, feel free to reach out to me on Discord. Okay. Sure. Uh, I really appreciate you. You know. Um. Appreciate you reaching out to me. You know. <laughs> For <laughs> Thank sure. You. For sure. Thank you I so appreciate much. it. Guys. Yes. All righty. Enjoy yeah. the rest of your day. You too. Take care. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.